YouTube, what the crap's going on? Era of Carthage here, and we are in Carthage in 1124 AD. I know, that's a little historically past when Carthage existed as it did. I'll explain here in a minute. Let me start things off by saying thanks to Paradox Interactive for sponsoring this video and having sponsored the stream earlier this week, where I got to join the other illustrious YouTubers like Turin, Italian Spartacus, H for Havoc, and also Dov Plays. And we had an awesome multiplayer session on Crusader Kings 3. Now, if you have watched that, you've seen these videos, if you want to check out the game, I have a link in the description. It helps to support the channel if you want to go check it out, if you're interested in the game. And I think you will be interested in the game. I, you know, this was one of those things where I was excited to play this game, because I've played a couple of Paradox games. I've never gotten into their grand strategy ones, but this game really hooked me. Which is funny because they've had past games that I liked, but I just haven't gotten hooked on yet, like um, Imperator Rome. It's a good game, it's fun, but for whatever reason I find myself hooked on this one, even though the Imperator Rome probably suits, you know, more of the historical background on my channel, right, that I was into. But I did something fun in the stream the other day. I tried to rebuild Carthage. I picked a character um, who starts here um, in, in, in control of uh, Tunis, which I actually renamed uh, to Carthage just for fun, and I started with that duke, and my goal was to rebuild Carthage up to the point of its form in the ancient republic, and at some point even try and change religions, and really try and just go for an all-out recreation of, of Carthage. And during the stream, while I tried that, we did pretty good for a while, but we started getting overwhelmed by enemies in the end, and we were getting absolutely mauled in a holy war that was being put on by the Pope and lots of the other factions uh, from across the sea here. And like I said, we were getting absolutely waylaid. It was bad. And so <laughs> I wanted to take an opportunity to give you all some advice. So if you want to rebuild Carthage, or maybe these tips will be helpful to you in your own Crusader Kings 3 campaign, I'm going to walk you through a few things that helped me survive uh, and start rebuilding Carthage. You can see here the Barkid dynasty is carving out Quite a foothold here in North Africa, and this is after a 1066 start, so we've been very busy for the last few decades, and I want to show you how you can be successful at this. To me, um, one of the first keys is going to be marriages, and I want to explain that. Um, when you're playing as a leader that's part of the Muslim faith, and if you want to see what's available to you, you can click the faith that your leader has uh, right there or down here on the bottom of the screen. So if we click it, it shows you the tenets of your faith. And when it comes to marriage, it's polygamous. And this is something that's in stark contrast to like when I played Petty King uh, Merked McDonald or McDonkid or whatever is, yeah, I can't pronounce the Irish stuff. I'm really sorry. <laughs> but when I played as him, you can't do that. And when you play here, you can do that. And you need to use that to your advantage. So obviously I married up immediately. Here's my secondary spouses and my main spouse. And I want to show you what my House Barkid dynasty tree looks like after only two generations of me playing the game. So here was my original character. And look how many kids he was able to have here. And now look as that grows. My dynasty now just balloons. And here's the current character I'm playing as. And you can again see all the children that we have as a result of this. So you got to use that to your advantage. But there's a little more to it than that. When you go out to get those marriages, what I did was I looked around on the map and I saw some very powerful factions like the Fatimids here. And so uh, you go and look for military power. So like you can click on a faction, you can see their military strength here. Um, and what you're going to want to do is marry up into uh, these uh, dynasties for protection. It's, it's basically like getting the protection. So if you have daughters, you can marry them off to the leaders of these factions and you can get a military alliance, and then if someone calls a holy war against you, suddenly it's just not you and your few troops standing against them, but it's you and all your allies. So as an example, early on in this campaign, I had Maghreb, I had Fatimids, and then all the way over here in uh, the Seljuk um, uh, Empire, I had a uh, the Sunni Caliphate allied with me as well. So I had over 10,000 military troops available to me just by alliance, and so, thus, no one was kicking off any holy wars against me. Let's see what I have at the moment. You can see that that's given me time to build up my own military strength, which is now closer to about 3,000 troops, 
And then you can see at this moment, I have an additional 4,500 or so troops from allies. A few of my, uh, a few of the characters that I was allied with have died, and I will continue to be trying to set up marriages. So, for example, um, you can take your, uh, your, my daughter here, and let's say find a spouse. She doesn't have one yet. And uh, you can see here, like the, the Sunni Caliphate, um, we are not uh, allied with them yet. They have a considerable military presence. Uh, but we could marry off uh, or betroth our daughter. And although she's quite young right now, she's 11, um, we can betroth her. Um, and when she turns, I think it's 16, then she will be able to, uh, to get married and we will have this military alliance. But I'll just give this as an example. You can look at all these alliances and see what their strength is. These guys are actually pretty strong too. And, um, but this guy's already 59. I mean, that military alliance may not last that long. It'd be better if I could get a strong alliance from someone where this marriage would last longer. So, like, for instance, this one is pretty decent. Uh, let's check out where they're located. If you want to see that, you can double-click the flag. Okay, this is great. This is actually with, um, over here with, uh, the Grand Emirate of Maghreb. So, that would actually be a good opportunity. So, I'm going to demonstrate what I was doing here. And let's go ahead and click on this. We'll go back to my daughter here, find a spouse, and we're going to pick this option. And we're going to set this marriage up. It's a good chance he's going to accept the proposal. And we'll just hit play here for the, uh, the sake of demonstration and see that we'll get an acceptance there. So we'll let that play out. And what that'll do is further my military alliance. I'm done with all my wars. Let's disband my army here. And you can see I'm making good money. Great, we have another alliance. This is fantastic. Let's now look at our military strength. See, we are becoming considerably powerful here. Again, if someone declares a holy war on me, I might be able to survive it. Now, there's another thing that I'm doing to prepare for the holy war. One is I'm setting up a strong defense in a key situation. So, in this city that I renamed Thapsus here, uh, which I believe was pretty common on the old uh, Rome Total War campaigns, I'm busy constructing a new keep for my castle. You can click this down here and you can see the level of your keep. You start out with a mot, which isn't very big, but now I'm, I'm constructing up to a castle, which increases the fort level even further. And you can go on further at some point and get a concentric castle and even a fortress. When you upgrade the castle, it allows me to upgrade these tower houses, which again, continue to add a couple of things. Uh, we're getting called into a war uh, by our new ally here. Let's see who they're having me fight against. Um... Not very powerful. And then this dude here, who also not very powerful. So we will join his war. We're going to accept that. And I'm going to uh, keep it paused again for a minute while we talk through this building phase. But anyway, we have that ally. We'll want to support him because we want to keep them happy. And plus, we can earn fame and other things off of it. But in any case, let's get back to this. Setting up a defense, okay? Advantage is very important in fights. So let's say that a holy war were declared on me and all of a sudden five or six thousand troops show up on my shoreline from Italy or Sardinia or Corsica. Well, what we want to have prepared here is a good way to defend. And when you upgrade these buildings, you can see two key stats here. Defender advantage. Advantage plays a huge role in the battles in Crusader Kings 3. By having a much larger advantage, sometimes smaller forces can win. Same thing with fort level. Having a bigger fort level adds to its garrison and makes it more difficult and takes longer for an enemy force to be able to su successfully siege it. So what I'm working on now, I have all these alliances. I've spread out. I've conquered more territory. I'm making good income. Uh, we have a lot of good things going for us. Now I'm building up a defense. So in case I ever need a fallback position, I'm going to have a massive castle here. And I'm going to have to build others over time too which is part of the reason why we're saving up money and working on a few things. So we are really working hard to build up a good defensible position so that if people want to invade me, they're going to crash like a wave against a rock and fail, right? So that's, that's what we're up to at this point. Carthage has to have a strong defense. Now, let's talk a little bit about a few other things that are going to be kind of fun. We have my leader here, and um, this leader is... I've never done this before either. I'm actually playing... Um, as an intellectual character whose skill is in learning. I've always played as a martial character, which my first character in this campaign was. But this guy had the strongest learning, and it's been really neat because I've been able to use it to accelerate certain things. So like down here, um, he is the head of our culture here, which is uh, Baranus. And we've already researched Bursk here, which unlocks early medieval military buildings, which is kind of cool. And we're working on a royal prerogative here because I want to be able to 
increase my crown authority because one of the challenges I've been having in this campaign is whenever a character dies, um, the current way that the secession law works is whenever or succession law, um, whenever my character dies, it splits evenly amongst his male um, heirs. And as you know from the polygamous marriage, we have multiple male heirs. And so whenever I get a new character, their power is relatively low and it takes me a while to build it back up. So what I'm trying to do is get in a good position to increase my crown authority. So like for instance, we go to the realm. Um, if we increase our crown authority, we'll be able to um, be able to control a little bit better and maybe even change um, some of our uh, laws when it comes to uh, uh, succession and other t things like that. So I'm basically just trying to be able to consolidate some power and keep it in my dynasty. Um, so yeah, it's been interesting playing as the intellectual character. I've used the opportunity to gain a ton of piety. In fact, uh, we're considered a devoted servant right now, which is several levels up in the piety, and we may even make it to Paragon of Virtue before he dies. The other cool thing about the Learning Tree is I'm able to get a huge buff to health off of this right here, so whole of body was a trait we were able to get, so we get um, a huge reduction to stress gain. I can go through stressful situations at this point, and it does almost nothing to my character. And we get a nice health boost, um, so it's really cool what we're getting here. Um, I also went on this um, uh, pilgrimage and uh, this Haji thing too, which gives me way more piety, so it's been a really cool thing. And another thing why I think you'll like this game, because again, I played as a military commander most of the time. Now I'm playing as a scholar. It is fun. I've played just a little bit with Intrigue, it's fun, and now I'm really curious to go see what happens if you try and do stewardship or diplomacy along the way. Um, the, I mean, it's just really cool the depth that this game has, and I'm having a blast getting to rebuild Carthage um, in the medieval times. It's a fun sandbox, getting to simulate your own dynasty, name the kids, name the, like, look, I mean, we even renamed, uh, and like, here's Quartahana, I'll bet this is actually Carthage too, I don't know, I just renamed cities here. Um, but yeah, we renamed these. You can rename the cities, you can rename the dynasties, you can name your kids, you can have so much fun with it. So like for instance, you can see it says Barkit on the map. I mean, you can write butt poo here if you want. So the game has a ton of um, potential customization and it's just a, a really fun time. This guy wants to pay me for a hostage. I'll take him up on that. Uh, one of the things that I have going right now is we've just completed some wars and um, hang on, let's see this uh, pays you, loses opinion. Ooh, he can gain more piety for only a little bit of stress, and he gains opinion of us. Yeah, see, this is part of the scholarly um, lifestyle we've chosen. It says, my Alama Ptolemy has received significant donation of gold from the estate of a wealthy but childless landholder, now deceased. He claims the departed lived a very frugal and pious life and wished for the gold to go where it could do good. Alama Ptolemy insists that I receive part of the donation as I am a paragon of Asharism in Barkid. Naturally, I plan on pocketing the money for myself. Um, so please give it to the poor in my name. This will give us even more piety, which again, I'm working towards that paragon of virtue. That will allow me to declare holy wars on other people, which could help us expand our empire and put us in a really interesting position. So I'm going to say uh, to do this one because the stress gain is very minimal. Uh, because again, this is a benefit of our, our high learning lifestyle. Let's raise our armies actually and go help our ally. We can see here that this is our war target, or at least one of them. Um, let's see, I don't see another. I think that's our war target. Well, there actually was two war targets. Oh, it's out here on the uh, these islands. So yeah, there's our two war targets. Uh, our army is raised, we are at full strength. And uh, let's go ahead and start it marching. It's gonna take a considerable amount of time, but I'll send it over here to siege. And if we help, we will pick up some extra um, prestige from the war, so it's useful to help your allies. Now, let's move on to a couple other things here. I'll give you all some tips. As you're winning wars, you're gonna go over your domain limit. The domain limit is how many holdings your character, so in this case, my character here is Hannibal. Um, Hannibal can only hold six holdings by himself. Look, we got another ally calling us into war. Um, the Duchy of Tuscany, this guy's actually pretty strong. Um, he's not crazy strong, but our ally is going to need our help. Uh, let's accept his war, and I'm actually probably going to help against the, uh, the, uh, Duchy of Tuscany. And it's these guys who are allies, so we're going to watch their army. And the Duchy of Tuscany is based up here. It'd be great to go siege their, their capital in order to win this, but let's just kind of keep an eye out 
and see what happens, see if we can help our allies while we're talking about this. It says, a local merchant has a copy of the compendious book on calculation by completion and balancing, but refuses to sell it to me. If you make him see the error of his way, I would be in your debt. So I can give him the gold, and we gain learning experience and a hook on Ptolemy. Um, we can give him the gold, and we can increase our learning by one, but he loses opinion of us, because we're basically taking the book from him. Or we can just turn him out and lose some opinion. Um, what is his opinion of us right now, by the way? It's plus 47, which isn't bad. A weak hook from this guy really isn't going to help us a lot. Let's pick up the learning, um, and we'll just suffer the, the loss of opinion a little bit. It won't be the end of the world. Um, but here we go. We've got um, got a good opportunity here. We're going to bring our armies out. We're going to keep an eye out for the armies of the, uh, the Duchy of Tuscany. And where was I at? I was Oh, I was talking about giving away these extra domain holdings, because we need to. So we need to go in and grant a title. And we can take some of our newly captured lands, so for instance, like uh, right here. And we can grant a title... Um, wait, let's uh, find out who we want to grant these titles to. I know that this, uh, this area would be something, so like, that one's held by our vassal. This is a title we can grant. Um, let's say grant to... And it'd be great, so see, like right here, we, our son, we can grant it to him, son and ward. Son, I want to make sure all my sons have a title if they do if they can and see they have claims on this stuff Which is good, but these are just claims. They don't actually have a title yet um, Let's find an older son who's actually about to be able to um, Prince Habdrubal so my brother here He has claims, but I don't believe he uh, Has an actual holding so we could grant it to him and he'd become our vassal there. Another call to war here. Maghreb against Abadid Emirate. So a bunch of ally wars going on right now. And we're going to give him this claim. Uh, at least, actually, we need to re-click it. And that will help. So let's grant that title. That gets us down to seven. And that puts another member of our dynasty in power, which should be increasing our renown, which to me is going to be pretty important. Our ally has raised his forces. I don't see the armies of Tuscany yet. Let's continue uh, granting out our domains, and um, let's click this again and check out... Um, let's see, our domain. Here's our different domains. Thapsus, we're not giving that one away. I'm definitely not giving Carthage away. Uh, there's this one here, Tarawan or however you say that, and then Gabez. Let's give this one to uh, someone, so we'll grant the title off of this one. So we'll grant two, and let's see if we can find another family member uh, to give a title to. Let's see, we got a nephew, a son, again here's another son and ward. Um, might be kind of cool to grant it to him. So let's grant him that title. And this is going to take our domain size back down to 6, which should put us in a good position. It still wants me to grant more titles, but I'm not going to. Um, using this suggestion screen is very important. So like right now, it's suggesting we have low county control. And it doesn't look like I'm currently doing anything about it. Let me show you all how to handle that. Um, if you have your, your character here, uh, you, uh, this uh, marshal, you can do this uh, increase control in county. And then click the county where we want to do it. So he's going to start working on increasing the county control there. All right, um, let's hit play. We fixed our domain challenge and taken care of that, so that's always good news. And let's see, we've got our army sitting here, and right now they're not doing anything. I'd love to go defeat uh, the Duchy of Tuscany. Let's maybe sail up here. We need to be careful, though, because we're singled out. Our allies haven't uh, sailed out, but they are putting to sea. So we'll keep an eye out for where they're headed. We'll want to fight with our allies to make sure... We are victorious here, but it is AI controlled, so that is always a mixed bag on what you're going to get. But anyway, you can see how we are managing to rebuild Carthage, like I said, pretty successfully right now. Um, if we needed to, we could call, um, you know, uh, sometimes when you declare the war, you can't... <laughs> you guys see the name I gave this character because they're an heir of heir of heir of heir of heirs. <laughs> uh, he needs a guardian. Let's uh, find someone to start teaching him. 
depends on what we want him to start learning, probably. My wife is really good at intrigue, so that might be a kind of a cool one. We could play an intrigue character, maybe, if we ever... We can ransom someone in our prison to get 50 gold, so absolutely we'll do that. We're losing a little gold right now because of the cost of our armies being active. Um, our ally is actually going ashore. Let's, let's follow them and see if we can fight together with them. Uh, we'll have a big penalty when we come off of the boats. And I actually wasted a bunch of money taking this army onshore and offshore because it costs you gold every time. But yeah, let's go see if we can help our allies uh, by, by coming ashore in Italy. It's taking me a while to, to get out of here. Let's see what else we got in the suggestions right now. We can negotiate alliances. We'll want to do this. These should be with the people that we just granted the titles to. And because they're family with us, we can negotiate an alliance with them, which will make sure that that military power uh, stays with us. And we definitely want to do that. I'm going to speed it up a little bit so we can finally get off of this island and head over here. So there's our alliance formed with our family members. Again, this should just be making us more powerful over time. This is great, too. See, we're actually in the positive now, even with our army raised, so that's that's a pretty good position to be in. Look at this, we got another son, and see, I mentioned you get to name them whatever you want. Um, so, we'll name this guy Marhobble. Here's a good Carthaginian name. May you grow strong, son. Yeah, you can see, this game is a lot of fun. You get to manage your dynasty, there's a ton of stuff to take care of. It does take a long time to learn, um, which, you know, can be challenging for some, but if you put in the time, there's lots of good videos out there uh, for, I think Party Elite made a really good tutorial. I think uh, Havoc's got some kind of how-to videos. You're watching me do this here. Look, Kamalkar just came of age. Let's see if he needs to be married. Yeah, he needs to marry. And one of the things I can do is search for Alliance Power and the Hamadid Emirate. We're already allied with these uh, folks, but if we want to stay allied with them, we could arrange this marriage. I mean, my character's only 16 in 10 years when he's 26. This daughter will come of age, and we can secure this alliance for even longer. Um, it says we can usurp an emirate here as well. The current holder. Let's uh, usurp this. We've got the gold to do it. So we're going to usurp it. We'll gain prestige for doing this, and we've now taken over that title as well. So we are gaining quite a bit of uh, power and authority here. So it's, it's definitely looking good. Our character is gaining a lot of titles. Let's see. I am ashore. Let's help our allies siege the uh, Duchy of Tuscany's capital. I haven't seen their armies yet. And let's take a look at this war. Um, they've got a lot of soldiers. But so do we. And assuming we don't get caught in a bad position, because most of our soldiers are here in the one spot, it also looks like he's in prison, which isn't going to help him fight here. His ally is actually the one with most of the military strength here. Upper Lorraine. And um, let's see if we can spot... Yeah, that's... Was that him up here? No. Let's see if we can find him. Where is he? Yeah, I guess it's just nearby there. Anyway, we're going to go help our ally. Make sure that they don't get overrun. We'll help complete this siege faster as well. It's a pretty good sized fort. And this will help our war score. So the way wars work in this game... Um, Whenever you end up in the war, you have an objective, and it's for a, a piece of land here. Tor Tortoli is what we're fighting for. Um, and I think if we want to zoom there, we can see it here. Uh, let's, well, actually, it'll usually show you the target of the war when we're in here. I think it's actually, yeah, right here. This is actually technically what we're fighting for. But you can see we're sieging the capital together, because what you're trying to do is drive up the war score. One of the best ways to do this is siege the capital, and you might get some really good hostages from having sieged it too. All of that adds into our war score, and if we gain about 100% in the war score, we can force a surrender, basically, um, and get what we want. So my ally is trying to fight for this piece of land here, and by taking their capital and then taking that piece of land, we can probably force them to surrender and uh, get a victory here. So that is what we are working on. I'll actually speed it up so you all can see this. Sometimes going fast like this during a war can be risky, though. Realm will lose land if it vassal dies. Low county control. We're working on some of these. You held too many duchies. Lowering your vassal's opinion of us. All right, well, we'll deal with that at another point in time. But again, make sure to use these suggestions. They can certainly help you out. Look at this. In the siege, we're doing good. 
I just want to show you all the results of winning that siege. Uh, it's too bad that the... Uh, oh, here's the armies that we need to go fight against. We could go do that afterwards. We wouldn't want to get singled out, but taking the... They, see, they took control of the contested province, or at least they're trying to. Um, occupied counties. But when we take control of this capital, it'll definitely give us a decent bump. And like I said, we may get some hostages out of it as well. Let's see what happens when we complete this here. Looks like our allies went ahead and marched elsewhere. Yeah, all of their armies are down there. My ally is leaving. We took control of that one, so see our war score popped up there. Eventually, though, we'll have to take control of the, the actual settlements. I'll be curious to see whether these guys come to fight us. Let's see, so we can uh, get the athletic trait. Health boost and a stress loss. I like that. Wide vocabulary. It gives it extra learning for a long time. Take the entire day off. Let's do this go for a run. So anyway, this is uh, hopefully giving you an idea how you can rebuild Carthage if you want. Or heck, I mean... Go pick the Byzantine Empire, rebuild Rome. Pick the Holy Roman Empire, again, try and rebuild Rome. Uh, I don't know, just pick something all over the world. You can pick stuff from literally all over the, the, the world here, obviously, other than the United States or South America uh, and, like, Australia. I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot of the world here that isn't included. And it gives you a time. You can pick any of these leaders. It's a fun game. You all should go check it out. I'm having a ton of fun playing it, and I'm glad I got to make a video for you all and share this. I, I feel like it's definitely relevant. Uh, to all of you, especially since, you know, we did a lot of historical total war on this channel in the past that, you know, this game makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense indeed. Anyway, Air of Carthage signing out for now. I will see you all again maybe sometime on Crusader Kings 3. Again, thanks to Paradox for sponsoring, and if you all are interested, go check out that link. See you soon.